Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Mario Mori. I've been teaching at the Lonsa College Kingwood, teaching art. <laughs> About 25 years, including as a junk time. So I'm loving it. I, I, I love to see. And also, I'm, I'm very mixed. What makes me really happy is my students are here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. OK, before we start, I, wanna, I would like to um, acknowledge the um, um, few, uh, some of you that are present in this room that are, first of all, uh, Br Brittany Lewis, thank you. She's the one who invited me first, and of course, Cindy Baker. And all is out here. She's in the back. Yeah. Uh, hi, all. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. And so, so Kelly. Kelly. <clears throat> Kelly's there. Thank you. She went all the way to Houston, the uh, grocery, not grocery store, Japanese market to find um, um, the sweets that you are enjoying right now. OK. So um, what I wanted to start is, so anyway, thank you for all, you, all of you that are opportunity. Um, it's about um, tea culture, but it's not so much about tea either. Because in order to understand the uh, tea, tea uh, life and appreciation to uh, uh, tea culture is really knowing about the little bit about uh, seasons and you know, uh, uh, traditions and customs of, of Japan. How many of you have been to Japan? Ah, ooh, we have someone from, uh, from Japan that I just learned, we met, surprisingly. Yeah, so thank you, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll be around if you have any questions afterwards. Yeah, so the first thing is to, um, I was gonna put the map first, but I thought it would be interesting to, hope I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this right. Okay, oh, okay, okay. So I started from, um, uh, Winter Park in Tokyo the, to, as a, a little nature. Cherry blossom time. I don't want you to miss this one ever. Uh, and, you know, when and it's cherry blossom time, I, I believe it's at April or April, March, April, that time. And whole city, the whole country covered in light pink. And this is a cherry blossom, you know, flowers, the blooming. And the people can lounge and enjoy the um, luncheon and some, maybe a little bit of a sake drinking <laughs> under, under the tree. And then there's a summertime, we have a lot of fireworks and you know, go over the river is, uh, the reflections are also magnificent as well. You can see the castle in the back. And also the summertime, the river that the people make wishes and they will let the lantern float. And I think it's the fall, uh, mm -hmm. probably representative of the um, um, magnific magnificent color, autumn leaves, um, in especially the gardens. And the one I'm uh, posted here is a Kyoto. And also sometimes it's the uh, arches, the ginkgo, ginkgo, uh, ginkgo, yeah, uh, leaves that makes a yellow arches like that. And the winter is also very cold too. So the Japan has a four distinct seasons. And this is happened to be the um, Takayama gift prefecture of the uh, old kind of farm uh, housings covered in the snow. Hope you have a chance to see it. It's, it's, it's a, I believe it's a UNESCO uh, yeah, uh, designated um, structure. Then, I think those of you men to Japan, it's probably familiar with this, the map. Uh, Jap see how close the Japan is to the, I don't know, this is the pointer. Maybe I should point this way. So where I was grew up is near Tokyo, and, but also I, I have some residency in Na near Nagoya, Gifu. Yeah, I travel all of this as well. And um, so it's an island, look, look at all this. I'm not going to read this, but you can read this one faster than me. But also, notice how geographically close to South Korea. This is like one hour by flight. And then also close to North Korea, and also close to China and Russia. So this is sort of, um, you know, it just 
one little gulf um, away, see with your friend away. So the, here's the, um, the Japan is currently the 15 hours ahead of us. They're 15 hours older than, 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 than us in uh, Texas. And, and uh, main language is, of course, Japanese, but many youngsters, they speak the English. So if you're one of those, you, you welcome, you probably feel fine at home. Uh, but also there's a lot of immigrants too. There's um, Chinese, the Korean, the Taiwanese, and Vietnamese, and all, all these all over oh, uh, people speaking all languages as well too. Um, a lot of food that you most of you are familiar with, like a sushi, that might be the first thing that will come to your mind. But it's also like a ramen. It's a good one, noodle dish, uh, you know, in the winter as well. So there's a lot of because it's fishing. Uh, fishery is the main, but also um, a lot of vegetable growing as well too. So these are the populations, and uh, it, that happened to be, but I thought it would be interesting to find one third of population being elderly by 2036. So there's a lot of problem there. The government, uh, you know, government, their officials are getting ready um, to prepare for elderly. Um, and then, um, the reason I'm, I'm showing this, how to travel efficiently, is it's called bullet train. It's called Shinkansen. Shinkansen goes all over uh, Japan, and you can stop from a, uh, this, a Tokyo station, and you can take this bullet train. The bullet train has uh, like a cafe, and you can have a, you know, all the dining amenities, and you can even sleep, um, and um, all the Wi-Fi access as well, and maybe more, right? Yes, so um, uh, that's what I would recommend, but also, you know, you might travel all the way. And current, this one says, this map is a slightly older, so it says um, uh, under construction, but it's really already built, that you can travel under this ocean and then reach to the other island. Same thing as this way, too. Uh, and the reason I put this one is because I'm, I'm my, I'm a, I identify myself artist, a Japanese American artist. So uh, it's always think about wherever I go, wherever the city, wherever the country is. Well, the first thing is I want to go to art museum <laughs> or art venues. And so I listed this few, and the one on the right, left, is, uh, these are all you can find in Tokyo alone. And the oldest being the top, which I have a few slides for it. And other city has all these too, but you know, again, don't miss all this beautiful nat nature, or, you know, temples, the shrines and the gardens, and of course a lot of food um, that you might enjoy. So. Um, only just just to handpick this two city, uh, not two city, two museums that I left uh, hand selected is one is this the National Art Museum, uh, uh, one of the oldest and largest in Japan. Also, and I decided to pick this Chichu Museum of Art. It's in built in Naoshima, which is an island um, near Shikoku, and Shikoku is like looks like a bow tie shape island. And this is a real contemporary one, but also not just the Japanese artists, but international artists, uh, major artists are represented as well, too. So starting from the Tokyo National Museum in Ueno, Tokyo, you can see the building itself. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't find the one, it's the fountain going, but uh, you know, hope this will um, make up for it. So the, the, the National Museum has a garden as well, too. So here's a little, like a tea house and, and the, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I'm going on faster, yeah. And there's a pond, there's a pond and a real tea house there. And when you enter in interior, you can find um, all kinds of uh, sores. If anybody interested in Japanese sores, the armors, kimonos, and you can find uh, in such a way, here's a full shogun um, armor there, and here's a little Buddhist statues. And I think 
the time I did the research, the admission was nine dollars. So I think it's reasonable, no? Yes. <laughs> and you can also find a beautiful kimono displayed as well too. Okay. And then this is one of my favorites that, that um, almost every major textbook has this one too. And I think our drawing textbook has this in, yeah. This is done by Sumi Inc. Um, drawing, but also it's, it's well known for it's for the major scale, but also um, you know this kind of faded away effect. So it's visible but yet invisible. So you have to probably imagine a lot, uh, you know, uh, in between. And I thought it would be interesting to show other form of art, which is a, a wood block print. So the wood blocks are being carved in such a way, okay? And then ink being, these are the tools, and here's an ink being applied, and you press with this, and over the paper. So here's a printer printing, and here's a kind of mass production going on, the ladies in kimonos. And also relating to the um, wood block print, here's the one with the um, Nihonbashi means like a Jap Japan bridge. Uh, it's in Tokyo. Yes, uh, I'm checking with my <laughs> new friend. And so you can, you can read this one, what's going on. And this was a, happened to be a Metropolitan Museum collection there, but uh, these are the people setting fish. And here's a shogun is about to procession, about to pass through this bridge. And now it's like this. <laughs> this is the current view. And still speaking about the Woodbrook prints, probably one of the most well-known one is this Katsushika Hotsai of um, Great Way of Kanagawa. And also the Mount Fuji would be a good one too. Um, those of you are in Japan, have, have you climbed the no. Mount Fuji? You didn't? Ooh, okay. Next time. Next time, yeah. And to be honest, I, have my, I myself haven't climbed Mount Fuji yet. And so the, here's a, a garden. Um, this, um, it's, I think this information came from the Khan Academy. So you could go and take a look at this. There's a whole videos you can watch and, and the meaning of this garden. I think it's simply there are 15 rocks, but there's always one it's hidden from every angle you move. So you can, you know, this is, this is the, uh, like a little ledge that you, you can, you know, take your shoes off and you'll go across your, it doesn't have to cross your leg, but if you sit them, look around, there's always one rock is hidden somewhere, no matter how, how far you go, you know, edge to edge. Um, and the meaning, it's, as far as it's, it's unknown, but maybe you can read this one to contemplate. Also, I think it's noteworthy is the one with the largest wooden structures. This is the, um, um, uh, it's called um, Sanju Sangendo, and it's a national treasure. And known for, um, there's a, like an archery competition going on um, in a particular time of a year, maybe the new year time. And then, you know, you shoot, try to shoot the target from one end to the, to the, the other end. And which houses all these golden um, statues. I believe it's 1,001 statues being housed. Because it's a sight to see. And this one happened to be called Todaiji. Todai is, uh, I think Todai is the largest uh, wooden structure that houses this wooden, uh, no, no, uh, bronze statue of a uh, Buddha. And here's the information, maybe you can read faster than, than I, can, I can maybe uh, mention. And so it can begin to relate to food and uh, cuisine. And um, if you go to Japan, these are most likely very common food, like a fish and an egg, vegetable dish, and uh, some kind of a soup and uh, uh, you know, seasonal, like a tempura and so on. Can you tell this 
there's a little flower there. Can you tell what season this one is? Spring, exactly. Here's a little branch of a cherry blossom there. So the season is very much um, um, appreciated. It means it's, it's always very symbolically used as well, too. So here's a, this is an inn, traditional inn. After you take a dip yourself into the bath, and then you change to those, and then you know the food being served, and um, also it's very seasonal who's being there as well. Sometimes you can find a uh, kakejiku, which is like a uh, scrolls hanging appropriate for the seasons as well too. And for the winter, I so thought you'd be interested in having a, a snow monkey uh, taking, enjoying the hot spring. And that they do. This is, I didn't Photoshop this at all. <laughs> yes, that uh, it's, it's good for them and good for us. And uh, the hot, you know, it's called onsen, is best enjoyed outdoors. So imagine that you are self in a snow falling, but it, you're dipping self in a, in a tub. And probably one of the most exciting ones for the maybe young generation is the convenience store that uh, almost has every needs, everything you, 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 you need means it, you can do the banking there, you can do the post op, yeah, you can ship to US if you, well, yes. And also, um, you know, uh, you know uh, clearly that you can sell, uh, they are selling uh, tobacco and alcohol as well, as all the snacks, frozen food, um, what else, the newspaper, the magazines, and tickets to the theater, movie, um, all, all, you name it, all of these are, um, um, found, found in a convenience store. And I thought it would be interesting to kind of show this contemporary art collection of uh, one of the island. It's a Chichu Museum in Shikoku. You have to take a ferry to get there, but this, this is, by, is a pumpkin by uh, Yayoi Kusama, one of the probably most celebrated, well-known artists, uh, Japanese uh, artist. She's in like mid-90s now. Um, but she has this show, compulsive uh, session with the dots. She made everything with dots. It's, her painting was made, consists of dots. And so here, here's a huge pumpkin. I forget, this is like over 10, 10 meter, I think. The, um, you know, all the different dots. And the last time there was a little storm and this pumpkin was washed, washed away. But now, no worries, it's all yeah, safely returned. <laughs> and then Naoshima is like this island and you come in the ferry and then you go walk into it. And there's a um, little garden to, um, you know, the, these are the um, seating lights that providing, and then all the museum, the piece artworks are underground. So there's a two major artists that are represented there. It's called by James Torrell, who deal with the light. And then um, this is Walter de Maria, by, by the way, that um, this, Fear is like um, taller than me, but, but um, so it's pretty pretty impressive. And by the way, if you know, um, Walter de Maria's show is currently going on at the menu collection. And the uh, Naoshima and the garden is designed by uh, like a Monet uh, impressionism. That's what that, that's why I heard. So I'm just comparing the differences between them. You can Google Earth to, so I, I did this when I did a presentation on the other occasions. Um, there was a kind of guilt uh, um, in a, where was this? Um, I think Ambo did the, I, everyone take, take out their um, uh, cell phone and Google Earth from uh, Houston and fly to Tokyo and then go to, you know, museum, this museum, and then to fly to Naoshima, and you, you're welcome to do that as you go along. But, so going back to tea. <laughs> so imagine that where the tea uh, being produced, it's a, such a small country, 
The tea is uh, major, mostly made in near near uh, where um, let's see um, uh, Mount Fuji. This is Mount Fuji, and the and the bottom uh, field is devoted to uh, um, <clears throat> tea tea plantation. So let me show you what tea plantation is like in a woodblock print. So here you can see the here's a Mount Mount Fuji there in the distance, and here's the people, you know, picking up. And after harvest, if they're drying and packing and so on. You can see that in a um, design prints. And he, currently, um, in um, APA building next to uh, our gallery, you find this. You can find this. All these articles are uh, uh, displayed. So if you're, you know, after the presentation or when you have a time, you might take a look at, um, you know, tea, tea bowls and different, different way of um, sweets and so on. I think, uh, but I last maybe four or five slides, I kind of indulge myself to add a um, little why I use, you know, my, my work is uh, all made out of a tea article. So here's a little tea ball. So here's one, one of the tea balls I brought made. It's made out of a handmade paper. Of course, it's not gonna work as a, because it has a holes in them, but it's just a, a, the concepts behind. Okay, and then so here's a tea kimono has been made long ago. And some, I call it wind catcher and a little Different forms, T, T. So as you can see, it's a lot of, lot of uh, ancient for me uh, structures and so on. Probably this is one of the biggest ones. Uh, the entire room is covered in collage, tea collage. And the U of J downtown have the uh, little show as well too. I think that was there. Maybe. Oh, I also have a little tea serving entertainment uh, performance as well. I think you came for this, remember? I remember, I remember you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, that was fun. And then, uh, yeah, a little tea box. Uh, not tea, but it's a handmade paper box to say thank you. And that was it. <laughs> Any questions? Cindy, you have a question? I just want to, I, I, I know everyone understood that those tea bags are your work. Yes. And Lauren collected these tea bags all over the campus. And I found it amusing because I rarely knew Lauren. And she mentioned the tea bags, and I'm like, okay. So I get it. And it's just a wonderful thing to be on the campus, and then your art has turned out to be in a lot of great locations. So I am actually a recycled artist. <laughs> Any questions? I mean, used, right? So it's and tea stained. Do yeah. Then I have some articles. I mean, books and so on. Feel free to come and find find those too. Your questions welcome. I know I've kind of run through this very quickly. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. The family gave me a, a bowl to drink tea with a, a family whisk in it. Yes, yes, so every yes. Every morning I take my green tea, pop it in, think about my day, whisk it up, you know, and then drink it slowly. How do I know I'm getting real Japanese matcha? <laughs> okay. You know, the Japanese matcha, matcha is the powder tea. And it's made out of a very freshest tea leaves, but of course processed. The matcha comes in a little container like this one. I have, I have actually one here. And you can purchase this. Um, again, I'm, I'm not, you know, uh, advertising any store or anything. But if you really want to go authentic, um, you know, powder, you can find at the, uh, like, a Japanese market in Houston. One is called uh, Daido. Also, there's another one. 
so there's a couple that you can find them. And in order to process this pea powder, you need a little whisk like this one. It's made out of a bamboo, okay? And then you whip it. And then you drink uh, froth. Did I cover that? <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yes, Kelly. Mm. Yes, good question. Yes. So I'm not, I don't want to say, and I don't think a Japanese tea culture is dying, you know, even, you know traditional ones. But uh, also, Japanese are very much interested in you know, embracing um, Western, you know, um, like a way of life, and because of the, you know, taste change, the young star are adapting to more of a coffee and Western tea compared, you know, compared to the Japanese traditional tea because it's more cumbersome. But also you can find those uh, tea bags, as you know, the tea bags are everywhere. So I don't think I answer your questions, but I think it's changing quite a bit of a Westernized now. Yes, um, tea can be um, served in um, you know, special occasions, like a New Year's Day, um, like a coming of age day, um, etc. Et and you could find them in uh, tea houses, uh, but mostly they're kind of kept as a, for the membership. And um, not everyone can just you know, walk in. You may make a reservation and to enjoy the tea. But also in order to, you know, foodie, traditionally serve tea, you know, there's a certain manners that are, and you have to be kind of licensed to do that. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's maybe restricting to some groups in a way. Um, so a lot, lot of young youngsters are adapting to the new, you know, Western way of, yeah, tea bags and, you know, uh, powder tea, <laughs> it, yeah, so it's a change, a lot of changes, yes. Yes. Do you visit Japan often? Okay, uh, not really. Last time I was there uh, in Japan was uh, 2018. Also, in a way, it's recent. It's recent, but um, very brief, just a layover and then return. Um, you know, if you really want to appreci you know, appreciate, or I don't know how long I hope you are there, but at least you need a 10 to 10 days to two weeks would be nice. Yeah, it's a small country. So you can, you know, just like a, you can take the brick train from all the way to northern tips to southern. It, yeah, you rec I recommend that too. Yes, it's it's um, that's the, probably the way to go. Then you can make sure you, if you're heading west, make sure you sit on the right hand side. So then you can see the Mount Fuji through the window. Yeah. 